was better than sex. It gave me the ability to go off into that fantasy world where I could be anything that I wanted to be. When I was gambling, nobody knew who I was. Nobody knew who I was. It was like a, um, a feeling of being in another world. When I realized how out of control my life was, I didn't immediately say, well, let me call somebody and get help. Um, I thought, let me call somebody and get a bottle of Valium and put an end to this. I'm so sorry. <laughs> America just can't stop gambling. It's now such a part of the nation's life that it's worth around $1 trillion a year, more than the combined gross earnings of half the world's largest corporations. The highlight of the sporting calendar, the Super Bowl, attracts up to $5 billion of mainly illegal bets, the biggest gambling event in the world. As the industry grows and grows, the only losers are those who gamble to the tune of $60 billion a year. I cut my cob on suckers my whole life. And when I look around here, all as I see is suckers. Yeah! Yeah! Most of us part with our money willingly. It's as if gambling satisfies a basic human need. It's almost as good as sex. It's close. Neck and neck. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a good feeling. Yeah! Yes! Most of the people that I know, uh, if they don't uh, have uh, a rooting interest, which is a bet on the game, uh, they're apathetic about it. Uh, they gets their juices flowing, it gets their adrenaline flowing. Well, I think money won is twice as sweet as money earned. And just knowing when things go your way, uh, the excitement of just knowing that you've in some way predicted the future uh, really gives you a sense of, of, of uh, achievement and accomplishment. For more than three million Americans, gambling is a disease. Jesus Christ! A compulsive, pathological condition that ruins lives. These people are caught up in a whirlwind of risk-taking and betting for the dream of money for nothing ends up in the nightmare of death, destroyed relationships, broken families, and even suicide. And as gambling spreads across the country, this number is growing fast. For five individuals, their descent into compulsive gambling began innocently enough, far from the gambling capital of the world, Las Vegas. At first, all they wanted to be was part of the action, that all-consuming excitement of the game that becomes a drug. I gamble pretty much all of my adult life, I'm just about anything. I, I uh, enjoyed playing cards for money. I went to the horse track, to the dog track. Um, I bought lottery tickets. I had gone to Atlantic City. I had gambled in Aruba. Um, I never did anything that I would have considered um, excessive. It was all always what I would have put in the category of either recreational or entertainment. I mean, I gamble on anything at any time, on how fast somebody can drink water, to how fast the roach is going to run up on the wall. The lottery, the horses, the fights, the basketball games, the football games, how many green cars are going to pass within a half an hour's time, how many red cars are going to pass. It, it just, it, it got to the point that I did it for the thrill and the excitement. I gambled every day of my life. If it wasn't bingo during the week, I joined a setback league on Monday nights to gamble. I played the lottery. I did scratch tickets. When football season came around, I bet it on the football. Let's go! Hey! 
I started gambling in my early teens, probably in the army. Uh, it was just a way of life. Also, Friday night poker games. I love Friday night poker. Uh, I got to be a pretty good live poker player. Uh, not big stakes, uh, but for the amount of money that I made, uh, they were pretty good stakes. And I did very well at it. My dream was to uh, retire, come out to Las Vegas, and dabble in uh, live poker. I gambled for fun. Um, I found gambling to be a source of entertainment, um, social activity. But for me, I also found out that gambling was uh, potentially um, a very serious problem for me. Unlike most social gamblers who merely just have fun um, and go home, I discovered that gambling actually created um, a different state of mind for me, and it became, in essence, the drug that I used to escape from my life and to avoid feeling pain. For many compulsive gamblers, the arrival of a new casino in their neighborhood was the point at which they started to lose control. Very quickly, I liked the feeling of um, being in another world. So exactly what it was that, that did that for me, I don't know. There, there, there were a host of things going on. I had turned 50. That bothered me immensely. I didn't have to think about that when I was gambling. Um, I was in a relationship. That wasn't going well. Well, I didn't have to think about that when I was gambling. Um, I was involved in politics. Lots of things weren't going well in that. I didn't have to think about that when I was gambling. It was a total escape. In 1989, I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis and I immediately went way downhill. I lost the ability to walk, I couldn't do my job anymore, and I was forced to retire. And emotionally, I couldn't take it. And I moved out to Las Vegas to escape. Compulsive gamblers find this offer of escape from life's problems very attractive. Without them even realizing, they become compelled to gamble more and more. It started in the morning when I was taking a shower and thinking about going to the casino, and it was a started like building, and that momentum was building. And by the time I was making the actual trip, I was like a runaway freight train. I couldn't get there fast enough, and God forbid anyone that got in my way, because I would pull up to valet and get out of my car as fast as I could, and sat down in front of my favorite slot machine and then I felt like I was home and the, the excitement and the exhilaration and the, uh, my heart would race. Uh, it was incredible what would happen to me physically but it started long before I got to the casino. Pathological gambling has only been recognized since 1986 and research shows clear differences between the sexes. Men tend to have a much earlier onset of their gambling behavior and tend to have more of the active, outgoing, stimulating types of gambling behavior, the racetrack, for example. These people often have sort of an under-arousal state and the need to go out and get lots of stimulation. In addition to that, they often have these subtle mood swings so that men are much more likely to gamble if they're in a manic or hypomanic episode where they're high they get disinhibited and they have this strong drive to go out and gamble. 